Hi everyone, I'm Melinda. Welcome to my studio. Today in an ongoing series of little watercolor tips, I want to talk to you about color. Student grade watercolors usually come in a selected palette. It's already assembled for you. But if you start to buy professional grade watercolors, they come in individual tubes or pans. You'll have to decide what you want on your palette. So I'm going to review just a couple of colors that I think are basics that should be on everyone's palette. The first one in the series is yellow ochre. It is a beautiful, rich, earthy, golden yellow color that is both opaque and transparent and is non-staining. It's sometimes considered not a very good mixing color, but I think that it's a beautiful mixing color, so I'm going to show you a couple of examples. Let's take a look. This is Holbein Yellow Ochre. I want to talk a little bit about the history of this color. In her book on color, Victoria Finley says, Ochre, or iron oxide, was the first color paint. It has been used on every inhabited continent since painting began, and it has been around ever since on the palettes of almost every artist in history. So when you dip your brush in yellow ochre, you're using the same pigments that were used in prehistoric times. It is likely the oldest art supply on the planet. The pigment I'm using here is synthetic yellow ochre. This was developed in the 20s and is considered slightly more staining than natural yellow ochre. Natural yellow ochre has a color index PY43. PY in the index stands for pigment yellow. If it says 42, then it's a synthetic yellow ochre. I've used both natural and synthetic yellow ochres, and I don't see too much of a difference between them. The fun thing about using the natural pigments is that you're using the same minerals that have been found in caves in South Africa dating to around 75,000 years ago, and that's pretty cool. So now we know if your paint tube is labeled PY43, you're using the organic iron oxide yellow ochre, and if it says PY42, you're using the synthetic iron oxide yellow ochre. Pigment is a dry, powdery color sourced from plants, chemicals, insects, metals, and precious stones. So the rarer the source, the higher the cost per tube. In watercolor, the pigment's powdery consistency is mixed with a binder, and that's usually gum arabic, which is clear and somewhat viscous. The wet version is tube paint, and the dry version is the pans. Those are the little squares that you can buy wrapped in paper. When you buy professional or artist grade watercolor, you're getting a full pigment load suspended in the binder of the gum arabic. Student grade watercolors are similar, but the ratio of pigment to binder is lower than professional grade. Student grade also may use synthetic hues in place of expensive traditional colors, and they also may not be light fast. Yellow ochre mixed with these eight pigments resulted in some beautiful shades. I'll list all eight colors in the show more section underneath the video window. In this clip, you'll be able to see why yellow ochre is considered both opaque and transparent. This sort of thing is very fun if you're just getting started with watercolor so that you get familiar with the pigment. Just get yourself a big sheet of paper, a brush, some pigments, and some water, and experiment and play and see how colors mix, how they travel when they hit wet into wet, and just have a good time getting familiar with your paint. Every artist will have different preferences for the colors they choose for their palette. You can buy pre-selected sets of watercolors based on a preference of a particular artist. If you don't want to buy a whole set, just get yourself a couple of tubes of professional artist grade watercolors and start experimenting. Just dip your brush in and move it around and see what it does. Yellow ochre is a good basic to have on your palette. It plays well with others and it has an amazing history. I think any of the earth colors, the yellow ochres, orange ochres, brown ochres, are a nice addition to a palette, especially if you are interested in subtle variations of color or images that include nature, outdoors, plein air, etc. As I mentioned, this synthetic yellow ochre is supposed to be a little bit more staining, so I've painted on Strathmore Bristol plate finish paper, and after it was dry, I was able to lift the paint off the paper to create this little face quite easily, so it doesn't stain too bad at all. 
So now let's take a look at some watercolors that use an earthen ochre theme in their coloring. This is Giovanni Boldini, Lady Pianist. Hans Hasen, Country Gums. Franz Bischoff, Still Life with Pink and Yellow Roses. Percy Gray, When Monterey Was Young. Andrew Wyeth, Her Room. Anna Alma Tadema, daughter of Lawrence, Drawing Room, Holland Park. She painted that when she was 20. Winslow Homer, The New Novel. Anders Zorn, Christina Morphy. So that was yellow ochre. Isn't it beautiful? I think so. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments underneath this video window. The show more section underneath the video window has a list of all of the colors that I used, including the brands, and I've put links where I was able to find them. Some of them were not available online. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of the other watercolor tips I have for you. If you have a friend that's learning watercolor, feel free to share the channel or this video. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, I'll see you in the studio. Don't forget to make something. Bye-bye.